Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the FX30 and its clear image zoom capabilities. For those of you unaware what clear image zoom is, it is Sony's in-camera processing that gives you an extended range or focal length on your lenses. It can extend the end of a zoom lens or it can also turn your prime lens into a zoom lens. Now, the reason this came about for me as a point of research is I am taking my parental leave in a few weeks and we're going to Morocco for six weeks to go surfing, which I'm super stoked about. I'm also super stoked that I got a GM2 70 to 200 to take with me on my little long extended battery life setup here with the Atomos Ninja 4, five, five. Problem is 70 to 200 is not that long for filming sports, especially surfing, because you obviously, I'm not taking it in the water. Gonna be still on the shoreline, servers are quite far away. So I was looking at buying a teleconverter. They are ruddy expensive, especially here in Germany. I think they're about 650 euros at the moment. And then I remembered that the FX30 has clear image zoom. So this would give me a 1.5 times zoom on the end of my 200, giving me 300. But I've already got a 1.5 crop on the 70 to 200 because I'm using an FX30 and it's an S35 sensor. We are actually at 450 mil. Very clever, it's lossless. Let's go into how it works. So let's imagine for a minute that this is an enlarged version of your FX30 sensor. This is a 26 megapixel sensor, which works out in K resolution to be about 6.7K, I think. This is downsampled in camera to 4K. The interesting thing is because it's downsampled, the actual 4K image from the sensor as a one-to-one -one pixel readout is much smaller. It's equivalent of roughly an MFT sized sensor in the middle. So only using this part of the sensor and there is 4K. So we're not losing any quality. It's maybe not so overly sharp as the downsampled 6K because it isn't downsampled, but it should be exactly the same quality as we're getting out of the FX3 because the FX3 is a 4K camera as well, but it doesn't downsample. It has a full frame sensor, but with only 12 megapixels. This is why it's so fantastic in low light because the photo sites are massive on that sensor. They're very small in the FX30. So this means we can, we can zoom from the full sensor downsampled readout into a 4K one-to-one -one pixel readout without any loss in quality. So the way I'm running this test today, we're gonna to zoom into 200 mil on the FX30 with this rig. Then we're gonna shoot a clips in 24, 60 and 120 frames a second. Uh, we're doing 120 because 120 already is in clear image zoom mode. As you'll know with the FX30, there's a extended crop. This is because it can't process the whole sensor and downsample 6.7K at 120 frames a second you need a computer to next to your camera to, to, to process that. So it uses the one-to-one -one pixel readout. And as we just talked about, the one-to-one -one pixel readout is essentially clear image zoom. It's not dead on, it's a little bit zoomed in more, a little bit cropped in more, I think. I think it's like 1.6 is the 120 crop, as opposed to 1.5 in the clear image zoom. But in the tests, I'll zoom one in and out to make them line up so we can see the difference. So I shot all these clips in 422 10-bit, uh, in H.264, because it decodes easier on the computer. So we're gonna run this as three images. We're gonna do it as a full 200 mil full sensor image, a post-production crop at 1.5 times, and then the clear image zoom at 1.5 times. And I'm gonna run those last two images over each other so you can see the difference between the quality. We're doing this in 24, 60, and 120, as I just said. So let's jump in and be surprised and astonished at how well this system works. So as we can see, the clear image zoom works spectacularly well. Uh, definitely, definitely sharper, clearly over all of the frames and doing a post-production crop. Now the plus side is with post-production crop is you have the full readout and then you can crop 
after. It gives you room to move around, do some tracking. It gives you room to do an additional crop. If we crop in again on the clear image zoom, we will then start to see some loss, but no more loss than if we did a higher crop from the original full frame footage. So let's take a quick look now at the Sigma 16 1.4. It's a very popular lens. This now becomes a zoom lens. So the 16 mil lens 1.4, obviously on an APS-C or Super 35 sensor like the FX30, is already 24 mil. Times that by 1.5, we're getting 36. So we're getting 24 to 36 millimeter lossless zoom on a prime lens. This is really impressive for travel and for people who like to use primes because of their sharpness and their wider apertures. You can then also use it as a zoom. So I also wanted to touch on limitations. I forgot to film this yesterday. Um, as soon as you enter clear image zoom, you will lose the ability to select an autofocus point. It, Sony explains it as it just focus on around the center. I uh, did some tests and you have to swing quite far away from what's in focus before it will then focus on something in the background. Um, it's okay, it's usable. Uh, most of the time you're gonna be using this for longer distance shots. I'm using it as like a telephoto extender and then autofocus is irrelevant. So long as it's focusing on something, um, it doesn't really matter. With this, you lose tracking touch focus on the screen. You also lose eye focus on subjects and face detection. Um, so these are the limitations. Um, take them as you will. For me, they're not too much of a problem, but they are there and they are worth noting. I'm not sure about other Sony cameras, but with the FX30 at least, you can control the zoom function regardless of this optical with a power Z or digital or clear image with the finger rocker on the front shutter release button. Now I can't test this because I haven't got a power zoom lens, but Sony say that the optical zoom will be used up first with this rocker switch. And at the end of that range, it will then switch to clear image and will zoom further. As far as I can tell, it makes this in one clear sweep. So for the 10 to 20, for example, you get 10 to 20, and then it will switch to clear image and go to 30. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth dive into clear image zoom. Um, like and subscribe. See you in the next video.